Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by and for returning to the old world. Today, let's talk about special characters and why I don't like to use them in my armies. This isn't, of course, to say that you shouldn't use special characters. It's your hobby, do it your way. These are just my humble thoughts and opinions on the topic. So why don't I like special characters? To really address this, I think we need to think about what special characters actually do. Now, generally, they are mighty warriors, great leaders. Maybe they have special rules attached to them. Now, do something that an ordinary character of the same ilk wouldn't be able to achieve. Maybe they've got some magic item or other bit of war gear that isn't available to anybody else. And you can use that to give you an edge. But fundamentally, I think special characters do something else. And that's drive the story. Now, it may seem a bit odd for those that have watched any of my other videos saying special characters are really important for driving the story. And I don't like that. When... I so regularly talk about the importance of narrative and the story. And we will revisit that as we go through this video. But first, let's just look at the way in which special characters drive the story. Now, we can look at the invented characters from a sci-fi universe or fantasy universe. And we can also look at historical precedents of the great and the good that are remembered by history. And of course, by great and the good, I mean the social elite rather than, wow, Napoleon was a really lovely guy. So, how do they drive the stories? Well, I mentioned Napoleon changed the face of warfare in Europe, an emperor of France, introducing the way of numbering houses that we now see here in the UK, for example. So it wasn't all just about the war. You have other leaders, Genghis Khan, for example, or maybe someone who merely commanded armies rather than nation states, General Lee. In the American Civil War, for example. What about people that didn't lead the armies? Well, there are other people who are great heroes, maybe from a propaganda standpoint or being the first to achieve a particularly notable thing. Maybe the Red Baron Manfred von Richthofen is an example of that. To an extent, all these people driven the story that is our history to a certain degree and if we were looking at the fantasy and the sci-fi universes we might be looking at the emperor Karl Franz for example we might be looking at Boromir from Lord of the Rings Gotrix and Felix Sergeant Harkin the list just keeps on going on But there are other individuals that have shaped our history, that have shaped the story of the world as it comes to us. And that these people, through maybe heroic actions, maybe actions which are not heroic at all, the actions of someone who fled from danger rather than confronting it, are also important. But these people are forgotten to history. Let's look at an example. Let's take somebody serving on HMS victory at the Battle of Trafalgar. Now this person's job is to load one of the great guns on the lower run de gun deck. In an environment that is 
pretty much a hell on earth. Smoke, flame, the screams of the dying and the wounded. Splinters several feet long, flying through the air. They can stand their ground, do their job, maybe take on other responsibilities also, as their friends are cut down around them. Or they could flee and try to get to the hold of the ship, worming their way past the marine on guard. They stand their ground, they keep their gun firing and certainly help with that process. Maybe that gun then manages a lucky hit, taking out the rudder of another vessel, preventing it from swinging round the back of the victory and raking it end to end. Someone's heroic standing their ground in horrendous circumstances has in a small way helped change the tide of a battle. Now this person, they've been lost to history. The name is forgotten, but they still matter, and they matter for us on the war games table in a different way too. A named character, special character, their story is told. Either someone has made up that story and you've already written it down and invented it, or from a historical perspective, it's a documented life. We know the victories that Napoleon had. We know the defeats that he had. We know how the Red Baron died. We know the story to a greater or lesser extent of Julius Caesar. But of our unnamed orc warlord or Empire Lord or hero. That story hasn't been told. It's never been written down. And that gives us the flexibility to engage with our own story. And forge our own narratives. And I find that really important. When I tried playing game settings just by way of example, such as War Machine and Hordes, really struggled to have any connection with what was going on on the table. All of the characters, a lot of the units I was fielding, all named, their background written to an extent. So I never felt I could really forge my own connection with that universe. Other game systems which allow you to have your nameless person X allows us a lot more flexibility because we're not necessarily interfering with the set storyline. It's probably a good time to discuss an example of this in practice. Now, a number of years ago, a friend of mine and I were preparing for a small club event looking at, I think, a combat patrol, border patrol type thing for Warhammer Fantasy. So battles were about five to seven hundred and fifty five hundred to seven hundred and fifty points, something like that. And I was playing the Empire against this game. Now my friend got off to a great start and spent most of the game battering my army senseless, sending my units running for the hills when they weren't being cut down to a man. And then up stepped the leader of my motley force a warrior priest, the model of which was based heavily on a Knight of the White Wolf, so lots of hair, big beard, swinging a hammer around. And knowing that the game was lost, I just threw my character, nameless warrior priest, into the fray to see what happened. And the Skaven unit broke and ran. The warrior priest went on to try his very best to cut a swathe through the Skaven army, breaking a number of units in the process. Now, I can't remember the result of that particular game. I suspect the Skaven won. They certainly should have done. But what I remember 
is the heroics of this particular warrior priest, who, because of his big flowing beard and long hair, was dubbed by my opponent, Father Brian the Blessed. Now, Father Brian became a stock part of my Imperial Army going forward and regularly overachieved on the battlefield to the extent that I decided he deserved a promotion and became an art lector, where he immediately stopped overperforming and started underperforming. And a few games later, I decided he was duly reached the conclusion that arch lectorship and all the paperwork wasn't for him and he would return to the life of a wandering warrior priest serving the emperor and smiting the foes of his god just to see his performance improve it was almost as though he had a personality of his own now obviously he didn't is a piece of plastic but the way we see our characters develop on the tabletop is something a special character can't do because their character's written what they like who they cut down who cuts down them are recorded and the nameless character gives us so much more creative flexibility and that is why I prefer not to use special characters wherever possible even though the special characters, the named characters, are the great heroes in the books that we read, whether they be novels or the history books. So that's it really from me on this topic. Thank you very much for dropping by. I'm returned to the old world. Have a great day.